Praise the Lord. We're so glad you have chosen to join us for this edition of the Faith Builders broadcast. Uh, we're so glad to hear all that God's doing in the lives of so many of you. And uh, we're grateful for what the Lord is doing uh, in our city, in our state, in our nation, in our world. And we're believing God for great, great things. Amen. I, uh, I've had people over the years tell me that, uh, you know, that I'm... Uh, well, I, I'll, I'll share a story with you before we, we get into our uh, message. Uh, I always tell the church, pastors have stories as part of our tool belt. And uh, I remember one time that uh, I, for years I did uh, ministry in the, the county jail. And uh, for probably 12 years we had a ministry there. And uh, one day I was ministering and, and sharing the good news of, of the Word and the good news of God. And I had a man stand up, and he got upset with me. He was very angry, and uh, he interrupted the class, and he said, I, just, I disagree with what you're doing. I said, well, what do you mean you disagree with what I'm doing? And he said, you're doing nothing, but you're just getting these guys' hopes up. That's all you're doing. And I made the statement. I said, well, uh, what am I supposed to do, get their hopes down? The gospel brings hope. The word brings hope. Amen. And I've told people over the years, uh, they'll say, well, all you preach is good news and, and the positive things of the Lord. Well, here's the bottom line. I figure there's enough people out there preaching doubt and unbelief. Somebody's got to even out the score. And uh, so that's my job. And so we're going to tell you some good things from the Word of God today. Uh, as we continue with this subject, Refusing the Care, and of course my book, Refusing the Care, is our product offer for this uh, week, this series of messages and you can order it. The information is there on your screen. And you can order it. And I believe it will be a good blessing to you. In Luke 21 and verse 34, Jesus makes the statement. He says, and take heed to yourselves. All right? Take heed to yourselves. In other words, uh, be, a, be alert. Be watchful. Pay attention to yourself. Lest at any time. Now notice that phrase. Lest at any time. All right. In other words, there, there is not a good time to do what he's about to follow through with. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that that day come upon you unawares. So Jesus makes the statement, and he says that if you are full of care and anxiety, all right, if, you're, if, the, if there's an overemphasis of self in your life, he says there are things that you can miss. All right, there are things coming that you can miss. That day come upon you unawares. There are things that you can miss. And he said one of the things we had to be on guard against was the cares of this life. The Woos Bible says the anxieties pertaining to the affairs of this life. And the primary reason that we are to refuse care is the fact that care can choke the word in our life. Now let's go back over to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And we're going to look at verse 18. Now trust you have your Bible there with you, your notebook or, or your iPad or your, your iPhone, something. And... Uh, Follow along because uh, this, the Bible is God speaking to you, all right? Uh, whenever I get a new Bible, there's a couple things I do. The first thing I do is I write in the flyleaf of my Bible, this is my Bible. This is God speaking to me. The second thing I do is I go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and I write above Genesis 1, 1, dear Philip. Then I go to Revelation 22 at the end of the Bible and I write, love Jesus. All right, this is God speaking to me. This is Jesus speaking to me. Now, in Mark chapter 4, verse 18, it says, And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world. Number one, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. So he uses this phrase, he says, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, entering in, 
choke the word. Now that phrase, entering in, it means this, to visit or to come by or to be put into. To visit, to come by, or to be put into. So what does this mean? Cares will visit everybody. All right? Cares will visit everyone. In other words, everybody will have an opportunity to enter into care. Why? Because they'll visit. There's something today that may visit you, that could make you worried or careful if you're not watching, if you're not cautious. All right? If care is not refused, though, think about that for a moment. Amen. You know, if you ask someone over to your house to visit with you, and they come and they knock on the door, you'll permit them entrance. You'll open the door and just step back and say, well, hey, good to see y'all. Glad you can make it. Come on in. But if somebody knocks on your door that you don't know, you may open the door, but you'll open the door and stand in the door. You're not going to invite them in. They are there. They have presented themselves. They are, if we could say it this way, they are visiting you but you have, not, you have not agreed to allow them entrance. And that's why this word, to visit, to come to, to be put into. So this is what I'm saying. They might come to, care might come to your home, but you don't have to allow it to be put into your home. Oh, glory. This word, again... We talked about this last week. This word cares means to be distracted or drawn in two different directions. All right? The, the Greek synonym that's used here can mean worry. Amen. It can mean worry. You, you cannot be in peace and carrying care at the same time. You cannot be in faith and carry care at the same time. Amen. Because both peace and faith require focus. It, it doesn't mean that I can't be in a pressure situation and not be in faith, or in a pressure situation and not have peace. It's when my focus is on the care and on the worry. I've got to abandon something to focus on this. Amen. Amen. You, you never want to focus on the circumstance at the expense of your faith and at the expense of your peace. Because both of those are weapons. Ephesians 6 says that faith is the shield that's put out in front of all, or the Greek says over all, and quenches every fiery dart of the wicked. Ephesians 6 also talks about our feet being shod with peace, and they, that peace keeps us firmly grounded and firmly, firmly rooted in the things of God. We're not easily moved. All right? Paul says that the peace of God, he says in Philippians that the peace of God is a guard. It's a protection over my heart and my mind. And what many people do, what many believers do, is that they focus on the problem at the expense of their faith and at the expense of their peace, and they should be focused on their, their peace and their faith at the expense of their care. All right? If anything, if anything is uh, uh, undermined, if anything is uh, uh, debited from, I guess I should say, it should be the worry and the care and the anxiety not the faith and the peace. Because those are your weapons. You do whatever you have to do to maintain your stand of faith and to maintain your stand in peace. Glory to God. So, anytime K 
cares enter in, I become distracted. I'm drawn in two different directions. Now, pressure is always outside. It's always outside. Care is inside. All right? Pressure comes and it's outside. I feel pressure. Care is in the condition of the heart. It's when I have succumbed to the pressure and begin to internalize the care. Pressure is an attempt to get you over into care. I mean, it could be something as simple as this. The enemy may say to you, what are you going to do? You've got something going on. What are you going to do? I've had him say that to me before. What are you going to do? And, and he just kept on. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You've got this. What are you going to do? You've got that. What are you going to do? You've got this other. What are you going to do? Amen. What is that pressure there for? To get me over into care. For what purpose? So that I can be distracted. So that you can be distracted. What you will not be distracted from cannot be taken from you. See here, in, in, in these verses that we read, the cares entered in, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust, the concerns of other things, and what happened? It was, it was possible for the Word to be choked. All of these verses have a reciprocal. Alright? They have a reciprocal. If I don't allow the entering in of cares, if I don't allow the deceitfulness of riches, if I don't allow the lust of other things, the Word cannot be choked. It cannot be choked. The, the, one of the issues with the Word and with faith is it's personal. It, it requires personal responsibility. I have to ingest the Word. I have to read the Word. I have to speak the Word. I have to build my faith. I have to stand in faith. I have to keep my faith. The enemy cannot just come and take the Word from you. I have to release it. I have to let it go. How, how does He come to take the Word? A circumstance, a situation, a problem, whatever it may be. He's after the Word of God. I remember many years ago, now, well, it would be 26 years ago, our uh, uh, second daughter is uh, 26. And uh, Pastor Michelle and I had, of course, we had gotten a hold of the Word some years before, and I was in the middle of, of, I had listened to a series by Kenneth Copeland entitled Establishing Your Heart on the Word of God. I had listened to that series so much that I broke the tapes. That's how far, how far back we go. We're tape worms. All right. We go back to tapes. And in any event, we had listened to that and listened to that and listened to that about Psalm 112. The righteous man's heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. Amen. Well, she had a, my wife had a perfect pregnancy. We went to the, 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 the hospital uh, the day uh, that she went into labor. And we were there, and we were there for a number of hours. And uh, eventually she gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. And uh, uh, all seemed to be well. And I was actually holding my daughter. They asked me if I would like to hold her. And they, they, they asked me if I'd like to feed her for the first time. They were, they were working on Pastor Michelle, and I said, yes, I, I would love to. And, and so I was there and, and uh, holding the baby, and uh, she kept turning this light shade of blue. And they noticed it, and they took her out and put her in the, the incubator. And, uh, well, the pink came back, and so they gave her back to me, and she turned a light shade of blue again. Well, then I could see the concern on their faces. And so they took her and put her in the incubator, but then they took her out of the room. They took her out of the room. And they were gone for quite a while. And, uh, you know, we, we were, of course, uh, praying and, and believing that everything was fine. And the doctor came back in, wonderful doctor, great bedside manner. She was very caring and considerate. And she came in and she said, well, we have a problem. We just don't know exactly what it is. 
And she went through the litany of what it could be. She said, you know, the, the oxygen is not flowing the way that it should flow. Uh, you know, it could be something very simple, but it could be something as, uh, as, as, as uh, serious as a heart condition or uh, a lung issue or something of that nature. Well, to make a long story short, the diagnosis that finally came back was there was some trauma in the birth control, and our daughter had experienced that trauma being born, and one of her lungs had been punctured. All right, now it was a very serious condition. They took her to the children's hospital there in the city, and she was in the intensive care. Now, here's my point. We had been dealing and, and feeding on that scripture that says, Our heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. He will not fear. All right, his heart is fixed. I remember this as plain as if it happened five minutes ago. We were there, my wife was in the bed. And we took hands, and the moment I took her hand, my wife looked at me and she said, Philip, I will not fear. My heart is fixed. And I said, yes, my heart is fixed. Now, people will say, what was that? That was the enemy trying to take the word. Amen. Now, now think about what an enemy we have, that he would pick on a newborn baby. But here's the point. The enemy came to take the word. Now, the result of that, the result of us not allowing the enemy to take the word, I went to the intensive care at the children's hospital. I drove across town and went to the intensive care. And they had, of course, back then this was before a lot of computer graphics, and they had a whiteboard out there, and they had a plan of treatment. And the doctors, they took me in there, and they said, Mr. Steele, this is what we're going to do, and this is what, how we're going to do it. And they said, here's the problem that we have. They said, your daughter right now is on something around 30% of room oxygen, and the other part is on uh, uh, the ventilator, all right? And he said, uh, of course, we need to get that, those levels up. And I said, okay. And, uh, you know, they said some other things that I, I don't remember everything they said, but that was the gist of it. And they said they were looking at three weeks, at least three weeks, before everything leveled out. Well, I remember going over, they had my daughter under these lights over there, and, and she was laying there just born. And, uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't touch her, but I put my hands as close to her as I could. And I said these words, my heart is fixed, trusting in God. My heart is fixed, trusting in God. And I spoke the healing power of God over her. I worked in corporate America at the time, and I worked just down the hill across the road from this uh, uh, children's hospital. So every day on my lunch hour, I would come up and spend an hour with my daughter. And every day that I would come up, they would say, good news, the oxygen levels are up. And I remember the day it went to 50-50. And then uh, I remember the day it went to 60-40. And I remember the day I came in and they no longer had her on the ventilator. She was breathing on her own. And it was on that day, it was on a Friday, I was standing in front of my daughter's uh, bassinet. And this was also a teaching hospital. And the main doctor was coming around with the interns. And he was showing them the different babies in the different cases. And he got to me. And he said, he, I'll never forget this. He turned around and looked at those students and he said, this is our miracle baby. And he said this statement. He said, we didn't do anything. She healed herself. Well, I know she didn't heal herself. God healed her. Now, I say, I told you that long story to explain to you. God was able to operate because of our stand of refusing the care and hanging on to the Word. Had we fallen apart and taken the care and got over into doubt and unbelief, the Word of God would have been choked and it would have become unfruitful. But because we took a stand and said, this is what the Word says, the Word could continue to produce fruit in our lives. Amen. So when, when the enemy comes to try to steal the Word and take the Word, you got to guard the Word. 
The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that you guard your heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. And where the Word is stored is in your heart. And when you put the Word in your heart in ample quantity and you guard it and you refuse to allow it to be taken, the Word will consistently work in your life. It will consistently bring forth fruit. Amen. The Lord said to me, the reason care is so deadly is it causes you to view the situation through the lens of whatever you're carrying. So if, I would have, if we would have viewed our situation through the lens of that situation, it could have looked very daunting. It could have looked, it could have looked hopeless. But because what we were looking through was the lens of the Word of God, we saw the answer instead of the problem, and we didn't carry the care of the problem, we carried the victory of the Word. And when you carry the victory of the Word, the Word will work through your situation and through your life. The care you carry eventually colors your situation. You will eventually begin to see it that way. Care will eventually convince you there's no hope. There's no hope. And when you lose hope, you have nothing to attach your faith to. Hope is a picture that you attach your faith to. Faith is the substance of the things that you're hoping for. Amen. And care works to mar that picture. To, dis, di, to, to distort that picture. Glory to God. Do, do, do you see this? If I have hope, I have something to add my faith to. And Bible hope is not like worldly hope. Worldly hope is basically wishing. Wishing things were better. Bible hope is that you have a picture of what God said. Abraham received Bible hope from what God told him, added his faith to the Bible hope that God gave him, and his faith in what God said produced Isaac. But he had a picture. Cares work to rob you of your hope. There is no hope. That's one, of, that's one of the most damaging things that you can ever hear anyone say. I don't have any hope. If they have no hope, it's been robbed from them. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. It starts by Paul saying, Do not be anxious about anything. One translation says, Stop worrying about even one thing. Yeah, but how can I stop worrying, Pastor? This, this is so overwhelming. Here, you've got to take the Word at face value. If He tells you to stop worrying, you can stop worrying based on the Word. And here's how you do that. Father, I see it in Your Word where You told me to stop worrying. So, on the basis of Your Word, by faith, I stop worrying. Yeah, but what if the thoughts don't go away? What if, what if they, they still plague me? Then you've got to answer those thoughts according to the Word of God. I'm not going to worry. The Word of God instructs me to stop worrying about even one thing. So I'm not worrying about that. That doesn't mean you don't take responsibility and that you don't work towards the end of, of rectifying that situation. What it does mean is that you're not going to worry about it. You're not going to worry about it. Amen. And it says in verse 7, here's what will happen. The peace of God that surpasses all power of comprehension, the Woos Bible, shall mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ. So notice when the peace shows up. When I choose to quit worrying. When I choose to quit carrying the care. When I choose to be in peace. Now that will require you taking control of your mind. That will require you doing something with your mind. You can be under pressure and be in peace, but you can't be worrying or carrying care and be in peace. Care attacks our hearts and our minds. And if I continually carry care, it will affect the way I think. 
and the way that I see, which will determine the outcome. The way you think is the way that you will see, and that's how things will be. You can't change that. You can't change that. So to refuse care, I have to practice peace. I have to practice being at peace. And practicing peace means kicking every thought out of your mind that doesn't produce peace. That doesn't produce peace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the word of God that has the power to change, to rectify, to absolutely, Lord, remodel the way that we think and the way that we see. And I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, we are certainly glad that you joined us for today's edition of the Faith Builders broadcast. And uh, we believe that God is ministering to you through these messages. And we thank God for your continued support. Please be sure and contact us and let us know what these uh, 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 teachings mean to you and how God's blessing you through them. Till we see you next time, please remember to build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God. God bless you. Pastor Philip Steele's book, Refusing the Care, is available. Inside you will find biblical truth and simple insight to help you resist the worry and refuse the cares of everyday life. Through this much-needed teaching, you can learn how to refuse worry and care and how faith provides a foundation to stand against anxiety and how to recognize wrong perceptions that allow cares to enter in your life. To order a copy of Refusing the Care, call us at 1-501-400-8797 or order online at buildfaith.net. With practical illustrations, Pastor Steele relates lessons he learned as the Lord revealed the danger of how allowing cares will prompt the door open to the enemy. You will be encouraged by this book as you learn how to refuse the care. To order your copy of Refusing the Care, call 1-501-400-8797 today. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can watch live streams or watch messages again to build your faith anytime you desire with trusted teaching from pastors Philip and Michelle Still as well as guest ministers and special events on our YouTube channel. Subscribe today and be ready to hear what God has for you. Thank you for your partnership. We have many ways that you can connect with us through your generous giving or prayers. Not only will your seed into this ministry help spread the gospel, it will produce a harvest in your own life. You can sow online, by mail, or by phone. Thank you for your faithful partnership.